Assalamualaikum, salam sejahtera. Saya Suhaimi Sulaiman. Malam ini kita nak berbincang tentang diplomasi sains. Ya, bagaimana mengukuhkan hubungan dua negara, Malaysia dan juga Amerika Syarikat melalui diplomasi sains. Ini yang akan kita bincangkan dengan dua orang tetamu khas kita. Pada hari ini saya perkenalkan paling hampir dengan saya adalah Dr. Rita Colwell. Beliau ialah wakil khas Amerika Syarikat ke Asia Selatan, wakil khas sains ya, Amerika Syarikat ke Asia Selatan dan Asia Tenggara dan juga ahli majlis uh, Global Science and Innovation. Advisory Council dan juga bersama kita pada hari ini ialah Profesor Emeritus Datuk Dr. Zakir Abdul Hamid. Beliau ialah penasihat sains kepada Perdana Menteri Malaysia dan juga setiap usaha bersama Majlis Penasihat Sains dan Inovasi Global atau GSIAC, Global Science and Innovation Advisory Council. Selamat datang. I would like to start with Dr. Colwell. Now, when you talk about uh, when we say uh, science diplomacy, different people will have different definition to it. What would be your definition of uh, um, uh, science uh, diplomacy, yes. I would say that fostering friendships and relationships, mm -hmm. uh, international collaborations through science, engineering, and technology, mm -hmm. using the opportunities to do research together to build build these relationships. Mm -hmm. We share the same uh, definition. I, I, I would presume, uh, Dato. Uh, always the same. Yeah, I think uh, is uh, using science to promote and strengthen bilateral relation between the two countries. Mm -hmm. And as you know, many of the problems today, whether it's in water, energy, health, agriculture, or the environment, mm -hmm. has a scientific underpinning. So here is the contribution of science into diplomacy. Mm. Is it easier uh, for uh, bilateral relations uh, when we say we go the science way compared to a negotiation and other aspects, uh, uh, Dr. Colwell? Well, science uh, interactions are for the long term. Yes. Uh, it can, friendships once established and collaborations in the science activity can mm -hmm. go on for 10, 20, 30, a whole career. Mm -hmm. So um, understanding and practicing what is a unifying activity, namely science experimentation, um, allows, I think, these relationships to be fostered, to be strengthened, and to be permanent, mm -hmm. which is very, very important. Mm -hmm. No, well, in, in 2009, uh, President Obama did mention about uh, partnerships with Muslim countries through um, scientific partnerships. Now, uh, maybe you can uh, elaborate us further on, 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 on what has been achieved so far and um, what can we expect in that relationship between the United States and Malaysia? The uh, past few days yeah. have been el enormously illuminating for yeah. me because yeah. I do believe that uh, Malaysia is on the cusp of really becoming a a uh, leading scientific and uh, technology nation. The capacity is here, the in intellectual capacity as well as the uh, university mm -hmm. capabilities. So the discussions have covered everything from biotechnology to energy uh, to discussions of um, um, science and education. Uh, opportunities for children. Uh, it's been a wide-ranging discussion over many areas, mm -hmm. but the main purpose is to strengthen the interactions that are already present and to find those that are new and can be developed and initiated. Mm -hmm. Professor Dr. Dr. Zakri, uh, what would be that specific areas? Because I will ask uh, uh, Dr. Hora later on water, because that's your passion, basically. Yes. Yeah, that's your focus uh, area. What would be, um, because we have heard of GSIAC, and uh, I think the next question that people want to know is what um, transpired or what would be uh, uh, implemented after the first meeting, uh, after May 17th in, in New York, yes. Right. If I can go back uh, yeah. a little. Uh, of before course, sure. May yeah. 17. Yeah. Uh, you mentioned about President Obama's yeah. de desire to yeah. engage the Muslim majority countries. It so happened that uh, President Obama and Prime Minister Dato Sri Najib are very keen to improve the relationship between our two countries. Mm -hmm. So here is where science, technology and innovation uh, could contribute. The uh, decision uh, would still be left to the political leaders and the diplomats. Mm -hmm. uh, scientists like Professor Colwell and myself would contribute uh, to that process. Uh, over the last uh, two days that we have, have had discussion with Professor Colwell, we have identified several of those uh, mm -hmm. areas. One of that, I think, is the utilization of Malaysia's biodiversity. Uh -huh. 
Our country, as you know, is uh, one of the 17 mega diverse countries in the world. And there's a lot of uh, uh, things that are still undiscovered in the forest or in our traditional knowledge, uh, which have potential as uh, new medicine, pharmaceuticals and all. Mm -hmm. So this is where uh, we could, uh, with the assistance of an advanced nation like the U.S., uh, utilize those resources to turn them into products. And here, you know, is a good uh, case of two countries, a donor country and a recipient country. Mm -hmm. One, a gene-rich country like Malaysia, and America, a technology-rich country, could collaborate. It's just uh, beautiful, I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, Professor Colwell, how do you bring that? Because people see it as a government-to-government -government, uh, 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 initially, but how do you expand that idea later on to the uh, private sector, to researchers, to students? How, how should we manage that? Yes. Well, one of the suggestions that I think can be very effectively carried mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. is to link laboratories together. You yeah. have a professor in the United States and a professor at a university in Malaysia, they are interested in the same project, mm -hmm. the same problem, and uh, funding is provided for them to pursue that research. And the students then can travel to, from the U.S. to Malaysia to carry out experiments, from Malaysia to the U.S. to again do work in a laboratory, learn a new technique. Mm -hmm. And uh, over the years, this kind of uh, exchange traveled to and from, as well as the technology of uh, electronic communication, which mm -hmm. is very effective, mm -hmm. allows um, data to be gathered, uh, papers to be written, uh, lectures to be shared. Uh, it turns out to be extraordinarily effective. Yeah. This is very interesting because uh, uh, in, in the knowledge economy, one would think of competition. And here we are talking about cooperation and collaboration. Now, how, how would that work? Uh, uh, and as a result, it would be a win-win thing uh, for, for both countries, for the well, people. Well, yes. actually, it's a fundamental biological principle. It's yeah. called symbiosis. <laughs> Two organisms work together, and you actually get more than just the sum of the parts. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see this in the international collaboration, that um, we have the opportunity, as was explained, that the diversity, yes. uh, which is extraordinary mm -hmm. in Malaysia, but we don't even have to harvest the material, simply understand the genetic function and the coding uh, and be able to extrapolate that in, let's say, um, micro microbial fermentation as opposed to just harvesting the material. Mm -hmm. So we are able to utilize compounds that are present, let's say, in some rare species of coral or some unusual alga that's present in the waters here that can be used as an antibiotic, mm -hmm. uh, anti-tumor compound. In fact, some of the natural products have proven to be very, very effective in treating cancers of certain types, blood cancers, in um, antibiotics against infectious disease, um, and even some rather nice mm -hmm. um, utilization for perfumes for extenders and blenders and food, mm -hmm. make the ice cream smoother. Okay. <laughs> so mm -hmm. there are many applications that can be uh, achieved. Mm -hmm. And of course, we have to uh, rank and also choose because uh, earlier on, uh, Professor uh, Dr. Dr. Zachary did mention uh, uh, you're talking about biodiversity, you have a lot to offer. Now, what would be the specific areas that we want to go first? and? Uh, do we have like a timeline? What can we see in a short term, medium, and long term? We we'll discuss it right after these messages, shall we? Okay. We'll take a short break and we'll be back right after okay, this. We continue our discussion on uh, science diplomacy. Question to uh, Professor uh, Dr. Dr. Zakri. Um, of course, there are, there are lots of things that, if you want to do it, you know, there, there, there are so many things that we want to achieve in, in sh such a short period of time. And But of course, we have to concentrate on certain areas. And of course, we have timelines what we would achieve short term, medium, and long term. Now, how should we approach this? And what are the areas that we looking at in, in when you talk about science diplomacy between the United States mm -hmm. and, and, and also Malaysia? Uh, one area that we would like to embark upon is yes. do more basic research. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to biodiversity that I mentioned to you just yes. now, what we should be doing is inventorying the kind of organism that are in our forests, our soils and our marine areas. We mm -hmm. have not done much of that. Now, uh, there's a new uh, body in the country, the National Science and Research Council, 
of which I chair, but with the Secretariat at the Ministry of Science, Technology and Innovation, uh, that is uh, almost a new body. Uh, but we'll be doing basic uh, research and applied research. But mm -hmm. what is uh, almost immediate now, you mentioned about the Global Science uh, yeah. uh, and Innovation Advisory yeah. Council yeah. chaired by the Prime Minister, which met in New York on May 17. There are several uh, quick wins yeah. uh, projects that uh, we are embarking upon. One of that is uh, utilizing uh, oil palm biomass. Mm. These are waste uh, material almost. As you can see, we extract the palm oil, but we left the trunks, the fronds, and uh, empty fruit bunches around. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, uh, some of those products can be turned into uh, uh, tables, furniture, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. But a more exciting one, uh, which has a lot of uh, potential here on a commercial basis, is trying to turn those waste products into uh, compounds, into sugars, uh, enzymes, and all, uh, which, which could be used as a basis mm -hmm. for the chemical and biochemical industry. Eventually, mm -hmm. it can be turned into pharmaceutical products. And, mm -hmm. And uh, it, the value is tremendous uh, in the hundreds of billions of ringgit or, mm -hmm. or dollars. But of course, uh, we need time. We need the skill. Mm -hmm. uh, we need the support and assistance of countries like the United States. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, if, if we take that as an example, how would the United States come in and, and, and assist us in, in uh, adding value? And, and what would be the next outcome from that? Yeah. Well, very clearly, um, a partnership where uh, it's a true collaboration yes. and uh, funds provided by the U.S., provided by Malaysia, focused on a joint project such as just described, mm -hmm. would make it very effective for the students to be able to interact, the faculty to interact. But what makes it, uh, I think, really uh, very unusual is that uh, these kinds of projects allow capacity building, that is, yes. technology to be made available to Malaysia. Uh, the students would have an opportunity to study in the U.S. U.S. students would have the opportunity to do field work, to do experimental work in Malaysia, which is a very enriching experience for both sides. Mm -hmm. So I think we have to view this as um, an enhancement for the U.S., enhancement for Malaysia in a genuine partnership. Mm -hmm. This is basically what I learned many, many years ago when you talk about knowledge. It's basically blurring of boundaries, and we always see this happening. It's, it's absolutely a blurring of boundaries, and yeah. what is wonderful about science, engineering, and mm -hmm. technology yeah. is that it knows no party, no um, affiliation other than humanitarian, mm -hmm. and um, you can see collaborations that you would not otherwise expect. Mm -hmm. I think it's an opportunity particularly for uh, a an Islamic dominant nation such as Malaysia to be able to interact fully with the U.S. and for the U.S. to have this partnership for its students to foster the kinds of um, long-term friendships, long-term collaborations and uh, research programs. Yes, and, and it would foster understanding in, in, in many other ways mm -hmm. rather exactly. than say, oh, let's study their religion uh, or, right, or, right. Or, or that particular race. Uh, so mm -hmm. because if we build that, maybe that's what uh, yes. uh, ultimately, uh, right, Professor? That's exactly. Yes. In yes. fact, uh, when you mentioned that, I think one concept which yes. is being uh, championed by our prime minister is this global movement. Right. of the moderates. And yeah. you're right, it is not only confined to discussion about uh, religious differences, yes. cultural differences, but to see how science and technology and innovation can mm -hmm. contribute to that moderation process. And, and Malaysia is a moderate country, you know. Yes. We would like to show the world that a Muslim majority country with diverse uh, ethnic races and all can live peacefully. Mm -hmm. And this is good. 
not only for us, but for the whole world, I think. Yes. Yeah. Professor Colwell, during the commercial break, uh, uh, I asked you a question on um, um, can we see examples in, in other parts of the world where people, you know, because of course people are skeptical sometimes when you introduce new ideas, new collaborations and all that. Uh, there are uh, uh, examples that, that, that we can actually discuss. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah. For many years, yeah. actually for almost 30 years, mm -hmm. I have been working in Bangladesh mm. collaboratively. Uh, working on cholera, mm, which okay. happens to be one of my yes. personal interests, mm -hmm. and we've been able to track the origin in the environment, and this work could not have been done if it weren't for the true collaboration between the Bangladesh team, mm -hmm. the U.S. team at the University of Maryland and Johns Hopkins University. Mm -hmm. And what we have done is um, uh, provide the opportunity to do field work in Bangladesh, mm -hmm. and the students have come to Maryland to learn some of the advanced genomics, uh, genetic techniques, molecular techniques. Uh, we've been able to apply this in the field to really learn more about this disease than we could have possibly have done individually, separately working. But more to the point, we jointly have had the satisfaction of providing some new approaches to preventing the disease, mm -hmm. to saving lives. And uh, this brings great satisfaction to everyone, the mm -hmm. students, the physicians in Bangladesh, to us as researchers in the U.S., to our families. It, it's a, a remarkable way of applying right. s scientific knowledge in a very positive application. Right. Professor Dr. Dr. Zakri, um, how would you measure success? Uh, it, uh, will it be based on... Uh, two or three projects or monetary returns and, and how would that how would we measure all this here yeah. uh, we can look at it from many different angles yeah. from the immediate to the long term mm -hmm. I would go on the long term first yeah, okay. and uh, this country has a target through the new economic okay. model yes. to be a developed nation by 2020 mm -hmm. and that uh, nation is predicated by a knowledge-based economy so one of the benchmark of success then is when we have a highly skilled uh, workforce in mm -hmm. this country earning a fairly uh, good income mm -hmm. you know, and eventually uh, producing technologies for the use of the world and not users of technologies yes. as we yeah. are practicing now. Mm -hmm. So that's the kind of uh, ultimate uh, uh, success, measure of success, I would think. Mm -hmm. But the immediate ones would be some of the earlier projects that I mentioned yes. to you. Yeah. Even the lab-to-lab -lab exchange yes, is yes. quite immediate and mm -hmm. can be implemented uh, right away. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I have to go to another commercial break, but when we come back, uh, ca can we discuss how do you further strengthen uh, G2G uh, initiative uh, and uh, embraced by uh, the people of both countries. How do we do that? Yeah, Can we take a short break and after we'll back up right after these messages. Yeah. Okay, we're having fun here <laughs> because, we, because we were just talking. Uh, uh, I was telling uh, Professor Colwell that I studied in the United States for six years and I wasted my parents' money for one year. Uh, uh, didn't do anything uh, yeah, uh, on a pretext of uh, uh, on an internship. <laughs> no, but, 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 the, but the point is that uh, my former professor will be here next week, if I'm not mistaken, and we go, that's some sort of a reunion. That's basically what we're talking about. That is exactly yes. what we're talking about. Yeah. Because you are as much a part of Portland and it of you mm -hmm. as he is of Malaysia because yeah. you have been in his laboratory or yeah, working with him. Exactly. Now, now let's talk about um, strengthening the G2G uh, relationship yeah? um, because um, others must also embrace this. Yes. Yeah? And uh, um, um, how can the private sector, for example, yeah, um, come in, in in a big way um, after um, um, things have been discussed at length and uh, we have timelines and also milestones to, you know, to, to address. Uh, how would, they, how would the, the private sector come in in a big way to, to, to make this a big, big success? Actually, um, what's very useful is that when the idea has yeah. occurred yeah. and some preliminary data have been obtained, then mm -hmm. there's that gap between an actual product and manufacturing. An industry can partner with the university okay. and the intellectual property can be shared. 
So it's a win-win, again, for industry, yes. the university, the government, which has initiated the research in the first place. Yes. So I, I call this the, the special triangle of university, industry, government. The partnership can be extremely powerful yes. and very enriching for everybody yes. in terms of the application and whatever profits that can be gained for the companies. Mm -hmm. One thing interesting about the United States is basically if you have research, um, you don't have to wait to sell your research work. You'll have people actually sniffing, ah, oh, that's a good idea in that university, yeah. let's go and, and fund this and all that. How uh, do you think, uh, how should Malaysia, you know, have uh, uh, and work towards having the same ecosystem uh, so that uh, research work and uh, new inventions in the universities get to also uh, be commercialized uh, in a very successful way, like, like what's happening in the United States? One very important way yeah. is that um, industries in the U.S. Mm -hmm. are very interested, of course, in opportunities overseas. Mm -hmm. And I think um, industries in Malaysia, similarly, would be uh, keenly interested in, in perhaps investing in some opportunities in the U.S. Mm -hmm. So uh, aside from, from the investment, yes. I think it's also uh, important that there are some things that can be done in Malaysia that mm -hmm. can't be done in the U.S. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. So by virtue of the collaboration, you complete the circle, make make the effort possible, and make the discovery um, yes. applicable to uh, real life. Yes, the, the same question to uh, Yes, uh, in fact, uh, as far as Malaysia is concerned, uh, we're looking at the private sector playing a very crucial role mm. in uh, moving uh, forward. Uh, just to recall, in any uh, developed country, yes. uh, the private sector is really the driving force in, in R&D, for instance. Mm -hmm. uh, we are not there yet in, in this country, uh, but we are developing the infrastructure for that. For instance, uh, earlier on, I mentioned the uh, establishment of the National Science and right. Research Council. Yes. But there's another uh, entity, a unit, the Innovation Unit, which mm -hmm. is parked at the Prime Minister's office, uh, which is supposed to be playing a role in trying to forge a stronger link between the private sector, uh, the universities, and, mm -hmm. and, and the uh, government. Uh, so all those things are in place. Uh, so I think the success of being a developed nation eventually mm -hmm. would uh, have to be played by the private sector. The government would lead, would yes. give the inspiration, the guidance, you know. Yes, and that's besides yeah. the university which uh, Professor Powell yeah. uh, mentioned, the tripartite arrangements. Yes. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think also it's very exciting to have learned about the development of essentially what will be the National Science Foundation for Malaysia. And I think this is a, a very wise step to, to take. Uh, it'll provide uh, funds, I would assume, for fundamental research. Mm -hmm. The uh, other ministries would be funding more mission-directed research. In this way, some completely new ideas can be uh, funded, mm -hmm. can be explored. Uh, will provide uh, an opportunity for Malaysia to really be right there mm -hmm. at the uh, top echelon of research endeavors, research universities in the country. Mm -hmm. Another, uh, I would say, project discussed in New York is basically that uh, sm small city S smart smart, smart, city, smart, 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 smart village. village. Yes. yes, I think that's interesting. Uh, and yes. do we have a choice? We don't have a choice. We have oh, to be smart in, in exactly. Both we don't have a choice. <laughs> but smart here is yeah. uh, utilizing uh, ICT, of yes. course. Yeah. But also uh, trying to uh, look at the prospect of being green, mm. the green economy. Yeah. And when I say the green economy is not only confined to the three huggers, so mm -hmm. to speak. It should involve uh, everyone. Mm -hmm. Green means uh, uh, optimizing the use of electricity in our house, uh, energy, you know, maybe even uh, using hybrid cars in the, in the future. Mm -hmm. So it's really to optimize uh, uh, using our resources. So uh, a smart city would then uh, take into view all those uh, factors, you know, mm -hmm. transport, uh, electricity use, energy use, a and so on. But in, in Malaysia, because uh, there's still a significant 
uh, decree of rural areas, we should also extend that to the uh -huh. right yard yes. in the kampongs and in, in the villages. And maybe we can start with uh, extending facilities of the internet and ICT. But uh, more should be uh, introduced in those villages so that uh, this would create uh, uh, empowering mm -hmm. uh, uh, the inclusiveness of, of uh, right. uh, what we're doing in this country. Yeah. How can we learn from our friends from the United States when it comes to uh, a smart city, smart village? Well, in fact, uh, in the city of New York yeah. itself, <laughs> the buildings are being retrofitted you know, okay. to make it more efficient. Mm -hmm. uh, I think uh, the changing of light bulbs and all that. Yes. Uh, or even the uh, transport uh, patterns. You know? So there are many things that we could learn uh, from uh, advanced countries like the U.S. Mm -hmm. and also things that we don't need to do mm -hmm. uh, from, what, uh, from their mistakes. Mm -hmm. yeah. No, no, th this is interesting. Uh, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, how does that work in, in, in this relationship? Because uh, um, sometimes you feel that, okay, we have to do research because our friends in, in other parts of the world uh, are also doing the same research and maybe they don't want us to know what they're doing and all that. But, but to turn it around into a partnership, uh, um, you, you don't have to reinvent the wheel when well, you can actually share resources. Right? Well, this, that, that's absolutely yeah. the case. Yeah. I would also add to yeah. the description just given, yeah. uh, recycling uh, and uh, creating a uh, sustainable environment. Right. Yes. Um, much of that is practiced in many of the communities in the U.S., yeah. some very, very successfully. Um, this pattern and this uh, approach can be taken, mm -hmm. I think, in the cities uh, mm -hmm. uh, here in uh, Malaysia. Uh, but also together, I think we can work out new, new processes, new fermentations for perhaps using the waste from uh, agricultural yeah. byproducts yes. or uh, uh, just recycling waste that provide an energy source. Mm -hmm. We have to think differently in the 21st yeah. century. Yeah. It's a complicated period of time. The problems are not simple. They're interdisciplinary. They're complicated. It requires teamwork. Yeah. It requires partnerships. Mm -hmm. I have to go to my very last commercial break and in our last segment later on, um, Earlier on, you mentioned that you know students from here can can go and, and study and, and do experiments in, in, in labs in the United States. I think I will get uh, emails from my viewers later on. That how do we go about uh, you know uh, maybe applying and all that? Uh, uh, and in our last segment, maybe we can discuss the obstacles and and, and challenges uh, the way forward after this. Yes. yes. Okay. We'll take a short break and we'll be back right after these messages. Okay. We have eight more minutes in our very last segment. And before I went to a commercial break uh, earlier. Um, we, we promised to, to discuss what would be the challenges uh, on moving forward and during the commercial break uh, what we discovered is basically it's not just Malaysia uh, because we want more students to, to, to be good in mathematics and science but the United States has the same problem too? It's, it's the um, same problem in the United right. States and countries uh, like Japan uh, mm. countries in Europe. It's a phenomenon that really is, is very that? strange. Um, students, um, somehow, I think the way science and mathematics are taught, mm -hmm. it's discouraging. When I was uh, a student, we, it was more of a discovery approach. You mm -hmm. figured out how things worked and you worked in a way that you learned the process. But somehow it has shifted to more memorization. Oh. That's not fun mm -hmm. and it's not really... Uh, uh, tickling the curiosity of the student mm -hmm. and I think we really need to stir up the curiosity and also the understanding that uh, a career in science and engineering is um, really very very uh, rewarding it, rewarding financially but intellectually as well mm -hmm. and one benefit I think many students don't understand is that when you become a scientist you are part of an international community. No. You can travel to any country mm -hmm. and uh, speak with someone in your field mm -hmm. in a way that um, is very, very um, interesting and unusual. I heard that you also did something wonderful to change uh, um, um, students' uh, attitude towards science. And, 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 and how, do you, how, how did you do that? Well, I think the curiosity-driven yes. uh, science, that is to carry out experiments where you figure out yourself 
how how things work. Mm -hmm. um, I think this is probably the best way, according to mm -hmm. all of the studies that have been done. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we initiated um, in the through the National Science Foundation mm -hmm. was to encourage graduate students to be involved in teaching elementary, middle, oh. high school, just the science. In other words, to work with the professor and teacher, and then instead of carrying out the routine duties within the university for the undergraduate classes, instead to have the opportunity to teach uh, for so many hours a week, um, four or five hours a week, um, in the elementary, middle, or high mm. school. And the age difference is much yes. less. The students look on it as an older brother or sister. Um, it's been very effective. That's a great idea that we can also implement. Yes, I uh, think if, if I started, uh, um, uh, there, there is a there is a, a, a yeah a, a foundation that's actually doing it. Uh, yeah, mm -hmm. should should how can we uh, do it in a big way, uh, Professor? Dr. I Zaki? think uh, as Rita was saying, uh, we should uh, create the curiosity yes. in in uh, learning science. Mm -hmm. Secondly, we should start them young. You know, mm -hmm. uh, maybe before school during the preschool years. Uh, all those have got to be in place, but also I believe uh, the teaching profession mm -hmm. has to be given uh, uh, more elevation. You know, mm -hmm. uh, teach teachers should be compensated not monetarily, but really with more uh, uh, a higher place in society. That mm -hmm. kind of thing. And there are countries uh, doing that already. Mm -hmm. Our neighbour in the south is uh, one of them. Uh, also France or Germany, mm -hmm. so we should examine that. But the American experience that uh, Professor Caldwell described is mm -hmm. also uh, something worth uh, exploring in these uh, 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 bilateral relations mm -hmm. between our two countries. Mm -hmm. Or oh, we can get a great uh graduates from the United States teaching elementary school students in this country. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. In fact, we are already yeah. talking about that right. today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. uh, uh, because I think um, it's about understanding what people in, in, in the other side of the world is basically doing. Yeah. Indeed. That curiosity, yes. But I think having the opportunity for uh, students to uh, meet and talk with astronauts with uh, exactly. physicists who are doing interesting experiments, especially those who can convey in layman language and who can interact with students. Mm -hmm. um, this is very, very important. After all, scientists are human beings. We raise families. Mm -hmm. We um, live normal lives mm -hmm. and we enjoy our careers immensely. Mm -hmm. No, uh, Professor Colwell, earlier on there was a news report. Uh, I saw you giving an interview about water. Yes. Uh, yes, that's basically one of your uh, areas of interest. Yes. I do believe yeah. that um, water is going to be a more important resource than oil mm -hmm. in the next decade or so. We'll, <clears throat> we're seeing desertification of um, parts of the world, which mm -hmm. means that uh, access to safe water is going to be um, less and less. Um, for some populations. And then at the same time, we have climate change occurring, mm -hmm. uh, which means some parts of the world will have maybe too much water mm -hmm. if uh, the sea level rise, as predicted, continues to take place. So understanding hydrology and the um, uh, available water systems, but most importantly, mm -hmm. uh, providing safe drinking water. We have learned that by providing safe drinking water, you can eliminate more than a dozen diseases just just by providing safe water. Diseases for which we don't even have vaccines yet. Parasites, bacteria, viruses. So it, it's um, an area of research I think is, is really critical. One of the discoveries we made was that the cholera bacterium is associated with plankton. And in Bangladesh, we, over a three-year period, we did studies where the women of the family who collected water for the family during the day, by simply using seri cloth mm. as a filter, folded four or five times, and then pouring the water through the seri cloth filter before putting it into the jug, mm -hmm. taking it up to the household, we were able to reduce 
cholera by 50%. Mm -hmm. So it's understanding how diseases are transmitted, uh, and especially in a water situation. I think we can do more for providing um, economic viability to a nation mm -hmm. than any other action we could take. Right. Thank you very much, Professor Coyle, for coming here. And uh, um, I think um, we would like to have you again when you come back to Malaysia, yeah. and, and we can see what we have, how we have progressed so far. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you. Terima kasih, Professor Dato. Dr. Zakri, selamat selalu datang di sini. Thank you very much. Kepada anda yang menonton, kalau mahu memberikan maklum balas ataupun menanyakan soalan dan sebagainya, boleh tulis saja ke Facebook Astro Awani. Kita akan teruskan perbincangan kita di sana. Terima kasih. Selamat malam. Assalamualaikum. Kita jumpa lagi. Thank you very much. Thank you. Pleasure. It's been great. Thank you. Always a pleasure having you.